Just to comment on, uh, since I don't know this area and where I'm going exactly, how will I know where I am? <clears throat> if you can only get one bearing to a distinguishable feature, then you're into a process I call contradictory confirmation. And what that means is you make your best estimate of where you are, then you look at your map and try to prove by matching what you see around you to the features on the map. You try to prove that you're wrong in your estimate. And when you can't contradict your estimate of where you are because it lines up too well with the map, then you have contradictory confirmation. If I am here, then by the time I get to this little, I'll be doing a 90 degree turn and uh, there'll be a trail going this way. So there are two features I can use to check. I'll pay attention to going back up here. Here's my second checkpoint. It, it's a dead end. So that's a good indicator. And the trail goes here. Um, when I get here, there's a little depression at about 950 and here's a depression at 920 feet. Uh, when I can match up those features with a hill here and a hill here, then I'll be pretty sure that I'm on my leave the trail and go cross country spot. The marsh is the next checkpoint and contradictory confirmation should be easy there. And then of course the last checkpoint is being right here by target lake number four. Here's a pretty pronounced depression. Uh, I guess it probably doesn't show up that well, but you can tell by the uh, tree line, lower tree line here compared to this canopy. And on the map, right by the edge of the word forest, you can see a depression. So that's probably where I am. An example of contradictory confirmation along the way, not at a checkpoint. I just hypothesized I was walking beside this depression and I was arguing with myself, well, if that's true, here I should start a pronounced downhill which should lead to a trail junction. And just about that far in front of me is a pronounced downhill. So I cannot contradict that that was the correct depression. I'm at a trail junction. It goes that way and it goes that way. So I think I'm at checkpoint one. How can I be sure? Right about in the center of the screen, you see a sign for a marsh at the bottom of a, of a pronounced downhill. And there's a marsh. About 42 degrees from my where I'm standing, there should be a lake. And the trail should be the reciprocal of 42 degrees. So 222, I guess, going this way. So if I check both of those, I then know I'm at a T-junction. There's a lake here and this should run the reciprocal of 42 degrees, roughly. Uh, so let's check that. I shot the lake and shot the trail and uh, they line up with uh, uh, 222 and 42. Uh, so I'll be heading on 222 and I'll check in with you at the next checkpoint. As I'm hiking this next segment, I should find a depression on the right. Perhaps I can, will be able to see this little body of water if it's still there before I make a right hand turn. And then uh, before I make a left hand turn to hit this trail, there should be a depression on the right, hill on the left, and I should be going uphill and along a little bit of a crest. So those are the features I'll be looking for to reassure me that I'm in the right, on the right trail. There's my depression on the right. Now with any luck, we'll see a lake up on the left.
there's the body of water. So, so far it's matching the map perfectly. Notice that Guernsey Lake has a little marsh to the north where State Forest Campground is printed through it and then another small body of water. If I am beside that, I should be able to see that. And uh, from here you can see that that's exactly what we have. And the compass says 328, pretty close to 330. Now I'll stop making you crazy with all these details now that you see how it's done and I'll just check in at the checkpoints. If I'm at checkpoint 2 it should dead end which this does. Uh, number 2 the trail should run from here on an azimuth of 216 which it does and I should be able to see a uh, depression right smack in front of me which I can you can see the lower edge the lower canopy down in the depression compared to here I'm headed for checkpoint 3 and I did pass this little green depression and on my left there should be a little lake surrounded by flatlander marsh and voila so I cannot contradict the hypothesis that I am where I think I am. I've been watching that depression on my left, which is this pink area here, and it's starting to fade back as it should. So my estimate is that I'm right where that section line crosses. Here it is, the end of the marsh, the end of the depression rather, so now all I need to do is find a suitable place to cut over that way. But first I'll, uh, I'll find an easy access and then shoot an azimuth. Since I'm very sure about where I am, because I've kept track of land features, I know that I'm sitting right here. So. This is a good spot for me to now go cross country and try to pick up that marsh. So I'm going to orient my map and find out what the bearing or the azimuth is to that marsh straight across from where I am so that I don't have to cover too many hills. And uh, then I'll shoot bearings and do short hops. And I'll show you what short hops are in a moment. Okay, I wrote down my azimuth to get to checkpoint 4, which is the marsh, and now I'll uh, short hop to it. Now I set the azimuth to 270 on my compass, and the close, the furthest object I could find is that little stump right there to the left of the big tree. And it's probably 12 yards from here. And that's why it's called short hopping. You're going to the farthest thing you can see, which is often a very short distance away. And when you're going into this terrain, you trust your compass and trust your map and you forget your sense of direction and intuition and hunches and everything. You live by your compass. <laughs> A grouse just flew up and scared the bejeebers out of me. And I couldn't figure out why did she let me get so close. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Four, five, six, seven eggs. Beautiful. Okay, back to short hopping. Now if I've been accurate in my course, I should be right on top of this little knoll so my marsh will be straight ahead and from here it's a pretty steep hill uh, I should actually be able to see Lake 4 which is my objective that I'll turn north to. 
Well, this doesn't match what I expected to see. It is a very steep hill. <clears throat> I don't see any indication of marsh down there beside it. This is the point at which you say, don't second guess, follow your compass. This is a fallen oak tree. Something just scuttled right down in the hole there, but I couldn't tell what it was. When I stop to investigate things like this, I need to make sure I can find my way to where I was. I leave a marker, that's my hanky, tied on the last short hop target. So I'll go back there and keep short hopping. Trusting my compass, there's my marsh at the bottom of the hill. And back here, as a reward for trusting my compass, I have some deceased birch trees with buku uh, horse hoof fungus on it. Okay, I'm at the marsh. I know I have to turn north to find the lake, so here I go. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Lake Four. A little marsh to the north. There's a little hump straight across. And then all that marsh I just walked along. This has to be Lake Four. One of the joys of being comfortable with a map and compass is that <clears throat> you can have choices. And so here, I've oriented the map. I've set the uh, azimuth line, the edge of the map, the edge of the compass, at the north end of the lake and picked a less hilly route home, which, if I do right, will take me to that little lake we passed on the way to checkpoint three. Okay, here's the trail. I deliberately sidestepped a bit to the south to come out on the south end of the lake. Uh, so, we'll see if I'm right. I'm happy to say I was right. This is that lake. I passed it on the way in. Now I just have to go to checkpoint two, checkpoint one, and uh, find my way back to the parking lot. Well, thanks for coming with me on this hike. By string measurements, it was a little over four and a half miles. Uh, had some trail nav and had some cross-country nav. I'm assuming uh, I'm getting up to the parking lot because they took a little shortcut walking the edge of the lake. Felt comfortable with the shortcut uh, because I knew I couldn't get lost if I keep the lake on my right. Uh, so it's about over. Thanks a lot for uh, coming with me on this and I'll see you on down the trail.